Hey there, my name is Rohit Kumar, and today we are going to talk about another important thing that is decision making. Decision making is a useful process and uh, it gets applied to almost all aspects of our life. Doesn't mean whether we are speaking or we are kind of silent, but uh, some sort of thought process always goes on. And that's why we make some sort of random or the sort of conscious, unconscious, uh, kind of subconscious decisions all the time. So the decision making is happening at the back of mind always. Now the thing is that uh, when you are having some sort of uh, decisions, then what actually you are doing? So if we come on to the actual uh, definition or the kind of related discussion, then in general discussion making is nothing but a kind of process of making choices. And uh, how do you make the choices? You firstly identify the kind of decision, then you gather the relevant information, then you have some sort of assessing the kind of alternative solutions or the sort of things. Then you think that yes, the current solution is the best one. That's why you take that particular thing or the kind of choice as a decision. So that's the normal decision making process. Now coming on to the specific detailing. So here at the University of Dartmouth, you can see that uh, the seven steps of our effective decision making we have discussed that identify the decision, gather the relevant information, identify the alternatives, where the evidence, the kind of evidences which are gonna support your decision, then choose the among the possible other alternatives or the, the including this one and other alternatives, then take the action and just to, to make it real and then review your decision. So that's the whole process. Some of the steps might be late, uh, means uh, you can just uh, drop, for example, review the decision because you have taken already the decision. So whether you review it or not, that's a separate thing. But if your decision is a kind of uh, multi-step decision, then obviously after one step, you can review whether you want to continue with the decision or not. So these are the sort of things. So that's the general thing. And uh, all these steps that uh, they have discussed over here in detail. But in today's video, why we are discussing this? Because uh, in our uh, computation models, in our uh, kind of MLDL sort of things, uh, you may design some of the models which are taking decisions on behalf of you. So when you are designing the kind of expert system, when you are having the kind of intelligent system, the kind of automated devices, which are taking decisions almost every second, then you need a very effective decision-making process. So that's why this topic becomes of quite relevance and importance. So we are discussing this particular topic in today's focus. And we are going to see some of the related things and some of the related libraries which are going to help you in deciding. In, not in deciding means in designing your some of the related projects. So suppose you are using this particular library, GraphNuts. So here it is what it is nothing but a kind of deep minds library for building the graph networks in TensorFlow and Sonnet. So if you are working in these kind of frameworks, then this particular library might be useful for you. Additionally, what is graph networks? They have given a basic introduction. So obviously it is nothing but the kind of combination of edges and nodes. And then you have the some sort of global level attributes. So you can have the kind of related information. Then for the installation purpose, they have given the detailed installation uh, guidelines that uh, what to do with respect to CPU, with what to do with respect to GPU, and some of the uses examples also they have shown. Additionally, the demo Jupyter notebook is also uh, discussed over here. The kind of uh, shortest path demo they have given in the browser sort of thing. So hope this uh, particular library is going to be useful for you. Additionally, we have another one, which is uh, termed as uh, the neural addictive models. And the neural editing models uh, are covered under the Google research project. So here you can see that uh, the, in short, uh, you name it, means the kind of acronym is developed for it, NAM, neural additive models. And these are helpful for the interpretable machine learning with neural nets. So, so if you are a kind of uh, AI or ML uh, enthusiast or the person who is working with them, so you can go for this particular kind of choice, uh, having the NAM, or you can have the multitask NAM, kind of uh, multitasking in the picture. Then some of the related dependencies, what are going to be the kind of sub uh, tools that you are going to need for this particular task, the kind of data sets requirement, and uh, the obviously the ethical guidelines uh, that if you are using it, then you are supposed to cite this particular work. So these are the some of the related guidelines from them. Then moving on to the third one, so you have the IBA. And uh, here, the uh, with respect to IBA paper code, you are having the code for the paper. Uh, where they are discussing the restricting the flow, means the information bottlenecks for the attribution. So here they have discussed the kind of setup where you need to clone a repository, then you are supposed to create the Panda environment with the sort of relevant packages, then you are supposed to just fine tune 
your environment. So if you are using it, then you are supposed to install it, then download the model bits and then do the all sort of other optional things. So these are the sort of things after then you can test it with the, the sort of uh, Python frameworks, whichever you are using, then uh, you are having the sort of scripts and the kind of citation function. So I think uh, these sort of things, uh, you can means these are just two, three examples that I have given over here. But all these things means all these models or uh, the sort of uh, uh, sort of neural networks which we have discussed over here may help you. I'm not saying that these are gonna help you because these may help you if they are compatible with your research problem or the sort of technology that you have adopted for your research. So they may help you in doing your research further with respect to decision making. Still, if you have not started your research, you may come across some of the related repositories or the kind of libraries on different academic websites or the kind of practical hands-on websites where you can find the relevant information and then decide that which particular perspective framework or the kind of tools or technology is gonna help you much because which particular language or the kind of framework is in demand where you can find more relevant data. So it becomes quite easy. But jumping onto a new field may uh, let you face uh, some new challenges, but uh, although it uh, has the kind of possibilities of growing at large scale. So that's all from my side for uh, this particular video. Hope you must have liked it. But uh, before closing the video, I would like to discuss one more thing that uh, whenever we uh, come into the domain of uh, decision making, and the first thing comes to task that why do we need it? it means uh, we, do know, we do know that decision making is important as I also told you, that almost every time our mind is making some sort of, a, whether it's small or big decision, but it is making. So it is uh, what it is going on, actually it is nothing, doing nothing but collecting data and analyzing it. So when you are analyzing data, you are doing some sort of next decision. For example, you are taking a movie sets, Okay, so out of that movie set, suppose you want to watch a movie and you are interested in multiple genres. So uh, the whole movie set is there. Then you you take the movie set, then the mind takes the decision which kind of movie, drama, action, romance, etc. Then uh, again, you take a subgenre. Inside that, you again go for a particular kind of specific artist like director, actor, etc. Et so these are sort of uh, small, small decisions, but these are going on. And these are based on the neural information that is passing through your brain. So that's why the decision making is continuously happening. And uh, uh, that's why I'm saying that you are taking the information from disparate sources and you are making that uh, different level uh, decisions. So that's why uh, the decision making is continuously going on. Additionally, the kind of data sets, if you want to discuss, then there are a number of data sets which have been used in, in research with respect to decision making, like uh, the wisdom, you have the uh, carrots STA, then you have the fair face, you have the logic UA, you have coed, you have Mura, you have peer read, etc. And uh, the most uh, kind of relevant thing is imitation learning people do discuss with respect to decision making. So sort of the th things which are available uh, for reference. So there are a number of papers. You can go to the academic web portals like Google Scholar or the kind of uh, ASM digital library. There you can find a lot more works where you can discuss uh, the decision making process with respect to the uh, existing literature. So one work uh, is covered in 2019. We're having that answer flow implementation. The title is Tabnet. The Tabnet discussing the attentive interpretable tabular learning. So the tabular learning is the focus with the help of attentive interpretation. Then uh, the another work uh, which is considered uh, of uh, importance uh, means uh, each work is important. Though uh, they have published, it doesn't mean that everyone uh, every work is gonna give you the same sort of length coverage. But still, it is important in some way. So the another work of importance is covered in 2018, where the brain tumor segmentation and the radio mixer survival prediction is discussed with respect to the kind of contribution to um, blood cell 2017. So here they have the PyTorch implementation and then they have discussed the kind of things. The relevant web pages uh, for Wikipedia is all, oh, sorry, uh, GitHub is also available. So if you are interested, you can move to GitHub and check these out. So these are just uh, some of the related references. If you're interested, you can find more works and you can find the relevant information. So that's all, keeping the video short, I'm going to pause it. If you didn't like anything, please do comment below and let us know what we can do to improve the videos further and we'll definitely consider your comments. Your valuable comments help us to grow. Thanks for watching, have learning.